What is a silly lie you once told, and you are in so deep, that you have no other choice, but to uphold it? Long ago, Discovery Channel had a special on prehistoric pigs. It aired on April 1st, and being a 12 year old who was smart, and knew how to think critically, that is, didn't think to look into the special and find out, if it was the real deal as I thought I knew everything. I assumed it was a joke show, put on by the channel. A few months later, they re-aired the special. My dad happened to be watching it and, nerd that he is, called me in excitedly, to show me this prehistoric pig programming. I scoffed and said, dad, it's fake. It was made for April Fools and now they're showing it again. Oh, he said, and laughed and laughed. Here's the thing I was wrong. The show was about a real animal that really existed. I discovered this a few years later on the internet. But by now my dad had started using these fake giant pigs as a conversation starter. Not only that, but he's flipped the story a bit now he's the one who saw the show on April 1st. And, 23 years later, the man still brings up this frickin' show. Because he thinks the idea of what he calls dinosaur pigs is hilarious. I thought of telling him, but it's too deep now. I go to my grave with this one. There is a guy who I used to work with at a corporate chain steak house, while I was going to college, that had bit of a whopper. We stayed up all night partying, and he didn't wake up in time for his opening shift the following day. When he finally got up he was 2 hours late, and had a grip of missed calls. He was about a month away from graduating, and had worked this same job all through college. So he was worried that he was going to get fired and wouldn't be able to use the job reference. So his solution was to call in and tell the boss he had been in a car accident on his way to work. Now this temporarily solved the problem. But to really sell the story he ended up hiding his truck in a friend's garage and working his next four weeks of serving shifts with a fake full arm cast. Brandon, you're a freaking legend. Last year on the first day of month long rotation in medical school, I was telling a story and accidentally referred to my dog as my daughter. Quickly did the mental evaluation of how embarrassing it would be to correct myself vs rolling with it and just decided to go with it and pretended I had a kid for the rest of the month. I didn't like purposely bring it up or anything, but if someone mentioned it, it was October was asked about taking my kid trick or treating etc, I would just vaguely agree, and not elaborate on anything. Not me, but my hairdresser told me this a few months ago, and I couldn't stop laughing. A few years ago, he and his girlfriend, at the time, went on vacation to a resort somewhere in Spain. On the first day of arriving, they got talking to another couple they met in the hotel, and just for a joke he pretended to be American, by putting on an accent. He's English. He said he wasn't even sure why he did it. He was just goofing around, and he thought he'd never see these people again, so it was just a throwaway thing. However, they ended up being pretty good friends with this couple, and saw quite a lot of them over the course of the vacation. I guess it would have been too embarrassing slash weird to come clean and tell them the truth, so he just had to go with it and put on an American accent every time he saw them. For a week. In addition to this. He was also going through some problems in his relationship, can't think why, so basically spent the whole trip either arguing with his girlfriend, or having to get in character, and pretend to be American for no other reason than his own stupidity. He said it was the worst vacation of his life, and was more stressful, than being home at work. Here we go, when I was in 6th grade my buddy and I attempted to skip school. We planned that the next day he would stay homesick. I would use this landline phone I had in my room which had a hold feature to, what I thought would, tie up the line all day, so that the school couldn't get a hold of my mom, who worked from home. This is obviously long before cell phones were a thing. I would go to buddy's house and we would play Genesis all day. So, turns out that phones, don't work like that. We are hanging out and suddenly I hear a car outside. I run downstairs and hide, while buddy answers the door to my crying mother who asks if he's seen me. He lies and says no. When she goes I come up and decide that I'm in big trouble and need to cover it. I plan to say some teenagers from the nearby high school were picking on me and chase me around a neighborhood I didn't know well. I head home and run into my dad who was looking for me. I give him the story and he seemed to buy it. He takes me home where my mom is on the phone to the police. She had my school picture out and is crying. 
She puts me on the phone and makes me tell my story to the cop. He sounds skeptical, but he accepts the story. My mom is happy I wasn't abducted by serial rapists. She then asks if I want to go back to school in the afternoon. I say I do because it'll get me away from being grilled about it anymore at home. But at school I get grilled by my teacher and the principal. My friend informs me the entire school went on lockdown when I was missing because of potential abduction. I had to keep going with the teenager story for years. I finally told my mom years later when I was an adult and she was pretty mad. But I was past getting in trouble for it. I can't think of any really big ones. But there's one weird one. In college. A group of people I didn't know well were talking about this guy they'd gone to high school with who looked exactly like me. To the point that they were convinced I was him fricking with them by pretending to be someone else. The only difference was that my doppelganger wore glasses. And I didn't. So in order to frick with them a little bit, I said that I'd worn glasses in high school. But didn't anymore. I'd never worn glasses. One of the people there that I did know well remembered what I'd said and didn't believe me. So the next time she bumped into my best friend from high school, she asked whether I'd worn glasses. He backed me up. Instantly, I figured he'd just figured something was up and decided to back me up. A decade later, with the acquisition of good vision insurance, I had my eyes checked and actually did wind up getting glasses with a very mild prescription. Upon seeing me with them for the first time, my best friend said, Oh wow, I haven't seen you with glasses on since high school. I've never been sure whether he backed me up and then somehow internalized that backup and then really believed that I wore glasses in high school or whether he just always somehow believed that I'd worn glasses. I've chosen to use it to very subtly frig with him by photoshipping glasses onto my face in old pictures that he's going to see. I did it recently when his sister asked me for some photos to use for his upcoming wedding. It'll probably never actually pay off, but I privately think it's hilarious. I once got sort of unapproved access to a VIP area at a venue, and the person who got me in probably would have gotten in trouble if it was found out that they did. A fairly major musician was playing. This was the lounge area where their family and friends were watching the show. Only about 20 people. When people asked why I was there, I said I was related to the owner of the venue. Figured this was boring enough, but would stop the questions. Instead, this really nice group of people all started complimenting me on the venue and talking to me more about it in my family. They were really awesome people and we chatted the rest of the evening. They invited me to spend the upcoming holiday weekend at their beach, housed with the band. I did. No one ever found out I have no connection to the venue and don't even know who actually owns it. I'm not sure if this counts. But the girl at the front desk of my gym has been calling me Justin for like 6 years. My name isn't Justin. That I could play the piano. I never thought it would come up then. That I was safe with my lie. It did come up. More often than I thought it would. I had to make up an excuse to not play. And people started to think I was lying about know how to play. Eventually I took some lessons. So that way, if it came up again I could actually play something and not look like I'm completely full of crap. It paid off. And after I moved from that area I never told anyone I could play piano again. When I was 10, another kid on my school bus asked me if I played World of Warcraft. I lied and said yes. I spent the entire rest of the year, before and after school on the bus, talking about a game I never played in my life. One day, I was invited over when he made me lodge in. I entered some account and claimed I forgot my password, spending the next 30 minutes trying to debug by resetting a password to an account that doesn't exist haha, <laughs> oh my god, what was I doing? My boyfriend, now husband, told me he went to grad school but never graduated. I found out around 10 years into us dating that it was a giant lie he had said to impress me. The only reason he came clean was his mother found out and told me. Years ago, Canada beat the United States in the Olympics in hockey. I had a couple cowalkers that had been gloating about how the US was gonna kick those Canadian asses for a week beforehand. So, naturally I teased them the day after the Canadians won. What? Are you Canadian or something? Actually, yes. 
I have a dual citizenship. They told a bunch of other cowalkers and it spread around. I had to look up Canadian facts to keep my story straight. Redacted. Told my husband when we first met that he couldn't talk to my grandparents because they only spoke German. They did speak a lot of German, but their English was fine. I just didn't want them to know I was seeing an Irish Catholic guy. They were very strict Lutherans. Now I'm 20 years into the marriage, and so screwed. I told my friends I was color blind to only the color orange. For some reason they all believed me, and would point out orange things to me, and laugh at me, while my girlfriend and I would be laughing on the inside. An older man of the church I go to misheard my name as Rachel. When I tried to correct him, he didn't hear my actual name. He later had his wife approach me and ask my name I just said Rachel thinking it would be fine. They told the entire church my name was Rachel and it stuck. I'm 8 years into this Rachel lie in a church. Great. Used to get my nails done when I lived in China with a friend. We told elaborate lies about her rich husband and my useless boyfriend to the ladies who did our nails as a way to practice vocabulary in Mandarin. I was leaving in like a few months, so it was easy, but she had to find pictures of babies and weddings and dresses to use. I just had to remember that my BF was a doctor and probably cheating on me, and she had to choose baby names. What's a potato? Will always win. I had to use my mom's van for a semester in my second year of university. One of my classmates saw this and started poking fun at me. He asked what? Are you a single mother now? So I decided to go with it and said nah. My wife passed away, and I'm a single father with twin daughters. He got pretty apologetic, and I thought that was that. That is until he started asking me about them every class period. I panicked and kept the lie going. Even printing out a stock photo of twin girls, to put in my wallet. To this day I still get messages from him asking how the twins are doing. They just celebrated their 7th birthday, and love soccer in school. When I was dating my husband, his mom wanted us to stay the night. I really, really didn't want to, told her I needed to go home due to not feeling well and thinking I had a fever. She offers me Tylenol, and I said I couldn't have it because I was allergic not sure why I said it. Anyways, my husband overheard it, and I later didn't want to tell him I had lied to his mom. We are married now. I recently had to go to the air due to breaking a bone and was in so much pain I couldn't talk. He told the nurse I was allergic to Tylenol. He then went to my surgery and doctor's appointments with me after that, and I had to continue to say I'm allergic to Tylenol. My Tylenol allergy is now all over my medical records. Told this story before and it kinda blew up. I moved to a new city when I was in 6th grade, and on the same day I started two other boys started, and they both knew how to skateboard. So I lied, and said I did to then for months I lied about being able to skateboard to them and other kids at the school. And I never came clean, because I didn't want anyone to call me a poser. So I bought skater boy clothes, and a skateboard, and learned how to skateboard, because I lied about knowing how to skateboard. Still skating since then. I'm 28 now. Not me but a girl I became friends with on a study abroad trip to Japan, got asked by her host family where she was from. They misused English, and it came out something like where did you leave from? Instead, being from the middle of New Jersey somewhere she answered Newark which was where she had departed from. Of course these nice people from rural Japan, having never heard of Newark, heard New York. They were so excited that they had gotten a host kid from New York City, that they promptly told all their friends all the time over the course of the month we were there. She never had the heart to correct them. So for that month she was a proud New Yorker. In high school I told a girl I was from West Philadelphia, born and raised, but I had to move to my current state because of a fight. She was actually from West Philadelphia and would talk to me about how good it was to meet someone from there. I avoided talking to her as much as I could which wasn't too hard as I had horrible social skills as is. I told someone I was mixed Dutch ex Spanish and now I'm so deep into it that I even got the town and all. It's pret bad and people go all like you you can see it. Your hair and body shape etc. I wish I could get out of it, but 12 year old. Me fripped this up a mayo. Going strong for 7 years now. 
My first job out of college was in local government where I worked pretty closely with a bunch of elected officials. Being 22 I was pretty intimidated at the time and really wanted them to like me. Somehow one of them got the idea that my name was Chris and it is not Chris. That guy called me Chris for 6 months before he lost re-election. Not mine. But, my grandparents both had birthdays only a few days apart, June 3rd and June 6th, with my grandma's birthday coming first. When they were in their first few months of dating, my grandpa told her they were going to celebrate on June 3rd for the both of us. This being their first time really discussing birthdays, my grandma took this to mean that they were both born on the same day. She played it up. Oh, we are soulmates. Look at us. Born on the same day of the same year. That kind of thing. My grandpa didn't realize his mistake until she told him happy birthday on June 3rd. But she was so happy about it, he couldn't bring himself to correct her and was just like, yeah, cool. We are born on the same day. This went on four years. With him actively hiding his birthday mail from her and pretending that his folks were calling him on June 3rd rather than June 6th. She didn't find out until over a decade later, when they were married, and she was mortified that for the last roughly 12 years she'd been celebrating his birthday on the wrong day. Not really a lie, Peresi, but I can't believe he let it run for that long mayo. In second grade a friend whispered my name during quiet time and I jokingly told the teacher that a ghost is talking to me. Later that day I was sent to the special counselor's room asking about me talking to ghosts. Jokingly I continued lying about how I downloaded a ghost radar app from those text the number to get this crap on my dad's flip phone and how they were always close and I just casually talked to them. I went with the lie for a few days cause how deep I was until one night my parents came home and just started screaming at me what the frig are you telling your school? You see and talk to dead people what the frig? And my brother and sister were just cracking up while my parents told me how I could be taken to a mental hospital if I don't stop lying, and it was funny, until they kept mentioning I'd be taken away. We laugh about it a lot, but goddamn that was my finest work of art. I told a senate judiciary committee that boofing means flatulence, and that devil's triangle is a drinking game. Oh dear lord here we go. Started my job about a year ago, and we get a 30 minute break which I wanted to split into 2 breaks of 15 minutes or 3 breaks of 10 minutes, so I can smoke. My manager said this was fine. Later on a co-worker asks me why I split my breaks as it's not long enough to eat properly. Me, oh I don't eat during the day. Co-worker thought this was an interesting fact so told everyone. Same co-worker asked me if I wanted a cuppa and I said yes but asked for honey in it instead of sugar as it's healthier for you and I was on a diet at the time. He asks if I'm some kind of health freak and if I drink herbal teas etc me didn't hear him right yes later that week my manager orders pizza as a treat i ask for cheese and tomato as i don't like meaty pizza my co-worker asks me if i'm vegetarian me i just really don't like meat i meant on pizza but he didn't take it that way and thought i didn't eat any meat so i'm a super awkward person and didn't want to correct this same co-worker one year down the line I'm sneaking out eating my ham sandwiches on my 15 minute lunch break and my co-workers only ever make me tea with honey roughly how do I end this lie or has it gone too far? Number plus help. I just got out of it this past year, but when I was 7 I touched the Stanley Cup. I realized years later I was telling everyone I kissed it, but I didn't. I just touched it. I dk when or why the lie started, but I'm glad I'm not doing it anymore. A little bit of backstory on this one. When I was originally starting to hunt as a kid with my grandpa and his cousin, they always told me that once I bag my first buck, I have to take a bite out of the heart. Initiation. They called it. So part of me was freaking terrified that I might die. But the other part realized how bousy it would have been if I really did it. So naturally I started telling my friends what would happen if I got my first buck. That day eventually came, when I was 12 years old. I was so excited, that I finally bagged my first buck, that I totally forgot about what my grandpa and cousin have been telling me for years now. I just couldn't wait for them to get to the site, where I got it. We start field dressing the buck. 
My cousin is showing me how to do it all, and I'm trying my best to keep up with him. And my grandpa speaks up. He shines his camera and says, So, are you ready to eat? My stomach freaking dropped. I was immediately panicking. I gotta do it. It's initiation. So between my gagging and near meltdown, my grandpa and cousin start laughing their asses off. Like, cry laughing. I asked them what was so funny, and they told me they've been bullcrapping me for the past couple of years. It's a lie they tell kids in the family, just to get them worked up over bagging their first buck. I was so freaking confused you have no idea, but at the moment I didn't really care. I just bagged my first buck. So I took a photo with the heart which made it look like I was about to take a bite. Left the gut pile for the coyotes, and went back to camp to start skinning the buck. You know what the first thing I told my friends was, when I got back. Yeah. Stupid lie. Means literally nothing. If anything it makes me look like a freaking moron. But, hey. I've been lying about this, since like the 8th grade. So might as well keep it up. When I was in a frat a few years back, I tried coke for the first time. It honestly didn't do anything. But I was extremely wasted, and at the time I often acted erratically for attention. Instead of just playing off that the coke didn't work, I kept twitching around when talking. As if I were actually coked out how I imagined being coked out looked like. As a result, my roommates freaked out and thought I was overdosing. They had our fraternity president come downstairs to see if I needed any intervention. I remember playing it off and twitching forcefully, but spouting stuff such as I feel like Superman which was nonsense. It was hilarious to blacked out me, but the next day my roommates thought they saved my life, and that I almost died before their very eyes. One of them was my best friend and he almost started crying about how scary it was. I just went forward with it, and played it off, as though I almost overdosed on cocaine and I live to tell the tale. My two roommates still are convinced I was a lost cause, and I never had the heart to tell them I was really just being a belligerent wasted idiot. This story has kinda followed me ever since. I quit drinking for a while after that. Tried coke a few more times though. Still didn't get the appeal. One of my colleagues, as a way to mess with her in-laws, decided to tell them their son, her husband was obsessed with Elvis, and would love Elvis related presents for Christmas slash birthday etc. He has no interest in Elvis at all, but through politeness, did not question his parents when the suddenly started giving him Elvis albums, movies, t-shirts, mugs etc. Well it's 20 years later, their house is full of Elvis memorabilia, his wife still thinks it's hilarious, and he's too far into the prank to correct them. Told this girl I work with that I was a bassist for the Goo Goo Dolls. Story time. We were talking about this and that and she ended saying something about how she was runway material. And I told her that she could be a part time model. Maybe. I forgot what she said next. But I replied with. My rock and roll days may be over. But I'm still way out of your league. She said. What? Were you in some crappy garage band? And I told her that back then we all were crappy garage bands. Then I start to tell her that we were kind of big. Went on Letterman a few times. Played a show in Toronto. She keeps asking questions. And I keep making stuff up. She has me hum a few songs. And a week later she asked me if I was in the Goo Goo Dolls. Because a song I hummed kind of sounded like name and I mentioned that Twister movie that had long way down in it. I never told her the truth. But she doesn't ask about it much anymore. I damaged my brain with alcohol and blunt force trauma. Through the host of other things that I had to relearn. I lost an entire color. We eventually determined that color to be blue. I've been living with and around it rather successfully but everyone I know knows I can't see the color blue or its derivatives. This always brings up a rather hostile conversation with new people because for whatever reason. The majority of the general public all have their understanding of what color blindness is and I, a female who does not see blue, do not fit it. So I felt I was constantly almost attacked about how credible my color blindness is by new people. One day I started a new job and realized none of the people there knew me and no one was going to assume I'm color blind. So I started to pretend I could. I can generally guess when something is blue, I used to be able to see it, or notice a strange coloring, or absent and deftly dance around it from there. 
I only intended to be at this job temporarily, and wanted to feel normal again. Well. Turns out this job, was a great fit, and they made a full time position for me, and now I'm here. Monday through Friday. 9 to 5. Living my full time lie. I have no idea how to tell the truth without reverting back to the original annoying discussion and eventually having to sigh loudly and explain. Because I was an alcoholic. Okay. So we march on. This is a long one. But since it backfired on me, I think it may be of interest. So. I live alone. I'm divorced. Because my ex-wife has been known to take mail out of my mailbox. I got myself a P.O. box at the post office. Now, 10 years later, all my mail still goes to the P.O. box. An added benefit is that every time I move, I just happen to move no more than 15 minutes from that post office, meaning I never have to change mailing addresses. The DMV here is just a bunch of idiots. 10 years ago, I go to get my new driver's license. They ask my address, and I give them the P.O. box address. No. They say, we need your street address, but I don't want any mail coming to my home. I want it all to go to the P.O. box. What I end up with is a driver's license that looks like this. Homp 1970, 123 Main Street, P.O. box 456, Enna Town, New York, 55555. Any normal human looking at that would be confused. But three officials at the DMV assure me. That's how it should be printed. Name. Street address. P.O. box. City slash state slash zip. But in my case, the street address is not in the same zip code as the P.O. box. So the zip code is correct for the P.O. box. But there is no such address. 123 main. At that zip code. Every time I've had to get something done at the DMV. They assure me. It's okay. And lo and behold. The stuff a mail me does come to my P.O. box. So that's good, but the insanity of the fact, that they require a street address, but it's not checked for validity, since there is number 123 Main Street at zip 55555. That just infuriates me, I need this damn street address, but it's not real. So in silent protest, the last time I moved, I didn't bother updating the DMV, the new street address would have been incorrect, because of the zip code. And the mail still comes to the P.O. box. So why bother telling the DMV my new address? And so for the last 4 years. My driver's license. My car registrations. My car titles. All have the old street address. Well. Last week I went to buy a new car. And I had to finance it with car payments. I sign all kinds of paperwork at the dealership. Yes that is my correct address. Knowing that it's dead wrong. I take the car home. Two days later the dealership calls me. The bank has a problem with the loan. They want me to fax over a copy of a utility bill. To prove where you live. Oh crap. I thought. They're onto me. Mind you. I wasn't neglecting to update my address. In order to commit fraud. It was only out of silent protest. Because of the ridiculousness. But the bank didn't give a crap about that. I knew that I fricked up. There was no way out of this. I quickly went on the DMV site, and changed the address for my license, registrations, titles. Then I printed my cable bill, electric bill, and home me R1's policy, all with the correct street address. And I went back to the dealership, to talk to the finance people. I explained that I forgot to change my address with the DMV, and I never got around to it. Why did you sign all that paperwork saying you live at the wrong address? Well, sir. When the sale was finalized, and I realized that I forgot to update my address, I didn't want to have to go through it all over again. So I didn't speak up. That was a mistake, and I'm very sorry. It took them three more days. But they finally called and said they had straightened everything out with a bank. And I could of course keep the car. But those three days I was in terror. I mean, I signed paperwork saying I hereby declare under penalty blah blah blah. I'm sure if they wanted to, the dealership could put me in deep trouble with some governmental agency. I wouldn't have gone to jail. But lying is lying. Fraud is fraud. And I'm sure I could have been in some deep crap with credit cards. My landlord. My credit report. Who knows.